Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my TypeScript tutorial. In this one tutorial, you're going to learn the core syntax of TypeScript all in one video. And basically, TypeScript's just going to bring a type system as well as future capabilities of JavaScript to you today. And anything you can do in JavaScript, you can put directly inside of TypeScript, and it's just going to work. So what I'm going to really focus in on here is what makes TypeScript different from JavaScript. So I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Now the very first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to have to compile TypeScript into JavaScript. So you're going to need a compiler. So what you're going to want to do, no matter what operating system you're on, you're going to want to go to nodejs.org and you're going to click on download. I would just go with this one right here, recommended for most users. So just click on that guy and click next a whole bunch of times until that is installed on your system. Then what you're going to want to do is open up your terminal if you're on OS X or Linux or your command prompt if you're on Windows and you want to check that NPM was installed. That's NPM. So if you are on OS X, you're going to type in sudo npm install npm dash g like this and if you are on Windows you are just going to knock the sudo part off right there and you're going to run that guy. The only difference is is if you are on Windows you may have to go in there and log in as the administrator. Now it's time for us to install TypeScript and this is the same on every operating system. You're going to type in npm and install dash g TypeScript and if you can't tell I'm a little bit sick today so that's why I sound weird so I apologize for that and you do this on on every operating system and you will have TypeScript installed. Now if you want to be able to compile from TypeScript to JavaScript, what you're going to do is type in TSC and you're going to do this in the directory where you're going to be saving your TypeScript files. So let's say you have a TypeScript file called tut.ts and for this tutorial I'm going to target ECMA script 5 because this has compatibility. Everything I'm going to do here is going to be compatible with um, all browsers. So you're just going to type in ES5 exactly like that. And whenever you do that, that is going to compile all of your different scripts. And on OS X and on Linux, to automatically compile every single time I change a file, what I'm going to do, this may work on Windows, it may not, so you just have to test it out. You're going to go tsc star.ts, which is the extension for TypeScript files, watch, and then target ES5, exactly like that. And whenever this runs, it's automatically going to compile everything from TypeScript into JavaScript. All right, so now we got all that set up, let's jump over and start writing some code. Okay, so I am using Sublime Text on the left side of the screen and just a regular old Google Chrome browser on the right side. And I just have the files open up here inside of the browser that I'm going to be making changes to. Now, the very first thing I'm going to talk about is the TypeScript way of handling variables. Now variables are going to start off with either a letter, an underscore, or a dollar sign. You're almost always going to start off with a letter though. And then after that point you're going to have the ability to put numbers inside of there. Now declaring variables as statically typed is going to be optional. And if you only provide a value like you normally do in JavaScript, it's going to automatically figure out what the type is. However, if you'd like to come in here and define the type for your variables, because that's one good thing about TypeScript, just going to go var my name, and then you're going to follow that up with string, for example, and then you're going to type in something inside of here like this, and then put a semicolon. Likewise, if you want to go and use a number, just like you would with JavaScript, you're going to type number and 41, for example. You're going to be able to create booleans. So I could say can vote colon boolean is equal to true. And booleans are only going to be able to have values of true or false. Another option you're going to have is to mark a variable as having any type. And in that situation, it's going to be a dynamic type that's going to change based off of the data you provide. So if you type in dog, it's going to be a string. However, you're going to be able to come in here and put a number inside of it, and it's not going to throw an error. If you would try to throw numbers inside of strings and so forth, they will throw an error otherwise. So there is a rundown of the different data types. And like I said, if you do not provide a data type, it's going to infer based off of the value you are providing. 
I went and created just a basic sort of HTML layout. That's what you see over here on the right side of the screen. And you can pause the screen and type all this in. Also, all the code as well as a cheat sheet for this video is available in the description underneath the video. Basically, I'm going to show you how to put information directly inside of this paragraph element. And then also you can see right here is where all of my TypeScript code is going to execute. So that is where you will see everything. So let's jump back over here. So let's say that I wanted to print in the defined element, once again, TS stuff. So if I want to print inside of there, you're going to do that the same way you do it with JavaScript. So you're going to go document, get element by ID, and I call that TS stuff. And then we're just going to go enter HTML equal to, and then I can say my name is, and then plus, and my name. And if I save it, let's bounce over here for one second. You're going to see that it compiles and you didn't get any errors. And you can see 1023, you know, it just did that. And if I come over here and reload this, you're going to see my name is Derek pops up and it got that from right there. All right, so that's one way you can put information on your page. Another thing that's important to understand is a variable that does not get a value assigned to it automatically gets the value of undefined. Very often, you're going to assign a value of null. If you, as the user, want to show that a value doesn't have, or a variable doesn't have a value, but you don't want to use undefined, null is very commonly used. And let's come in here and let's put some more information on our page. So we can use document write just like we always do. So then go document and write. And if I want to print directly inside of the page, I can say something like my name is a, and let's go and explore the different data types. You can see what the data type is for a variable by just putting type of, and then throw in whatever you want inside of there. And if you want to have a new line show up inside of here, you can just go and throw a break statement inside of here. And let's go and get the different data types for the other different variables we defined here. So let's throw that inside of there. And let's throw can vote inside of there. And let's throw can vote inside of here, as well as right there. And let's also throw in anything to see what anything looks like whenever we ask for its type. Anything and anything. And reload it. And you're going to see can vote comes back as a boolean. My name is a string and anything is a number. The, again, it's going to change the data type for this since it's an any depending upon whatever data you have in here. The last thing you assigned is a number, so it is a number. You're also, there's a couple different ways to convert strings into numbers and numbers into strings. I'm going to show you all of them as the tutorial continues, but I'll just show you one here. String to num, and let's have this be a number type, and I can say parse int like that, and throw a string inside of there, and that's going to convert that string into a number. Likewise, if you would like to come in here and convert a number into a string, let's go and create var, let's call this num to string, and number is equal to five. Let's put that up a little bit, and then we'll come down and convert this to a string. So we'll say document write num to string is a that's out of there and we'll say type of and then go num to string and you can call the to string function and it's going to convert any data type into a string for you break statement i mean and before i run it i'll just show you you can create constants and so let's say we wanted pi to be a constant. You just go like this, and that just means the value is not going to be able to change. All right, and run it. And you can see right there, num to string is a string, and that's what we were checking for right there. So there's a rundown on variables. Like I said, as the tutorial continues, I'm going to show you how other different ways to convert strings into numbers and numbers into strings and things like that. But now let's briefly talk about interfaces. Now interfaces can be used for a couple different things. What I'm going to show here first is a way to create complex data types, since we were talking about data types here a second ago. So how you do that is you go interface, and you could say superhero would be a complex data type I'd like to create. And let's say that, well, I'm going to define what data type it is. It's going to contain the real name as well as the super name for our superheroes. There that is. 
and make sure you put semicolons here at the end. All right, so there's a complex type that we can work with. Now what I'm gonna be able to do is do something like Superman and say that it is of type superhero, and then I can define the different things. So I can say something like Clark Kent and super name and define that as Superman. And then if I want to go and get that information out of this data type, I can just say Superman and then real name. And you're more than likely always going to want to separate your strings with plus signs is plus Superman and I'll throw real name in there, but actually what I want is the super name, super name and reload it and Clark Kent is Superman pops back there. And like I said, there's going to be more on interfaces below, but now I'm going to talk about arrays. So let's say we want to create an array of strings. How would we do that? Well, we'll just go var, employees, and string. And then you would just assign the different string values you want assigned to your array. So let's say we want Bob and Sally and Sam. We just do it like that. Now, if you would try to then push on a value that was not a string onto the array, so for example, if you would go and do something like push and five, that would actually trigger an error. And if I compile it, let's just compile it, just to see what happens. You're going to see down here, da 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 da. Error, you see right here, argument of type num is not assignable to parameter of type string. Okay, so we're not going to be able to do that. So you're going to have to make sure that anything you put inside of this array is a string. And if we would want to come in here and print out all of the different things that are in our array, just go employees to string, and we could do that, reload this, and there you can see they all print it out. And once again, you could also go and store your special interface types that you created inside an array. You can store anything inside an array. Like I said, anything you can do with JavaScript, you can do with TypeScript. So let's say that I wanted to throw in superheroes, and this guy specifically is going to be superhero array type. I could then easily push on a new superhero with push and then define all the different things that I want to throw inside of here. Bruce Wayne and the super name property also. And in this situation, we would put Batman inside of there. And likewise, if I would want to print out the information that is on there or inside of there, I could just go document right and superheroes and since I want the very first item inside of there I would do and get the first index real name and follow that up with is superheroes and once again we're going to get the first index value inside of there and do super name and then of course throw a break statement inside of there just like we did before and reload and you can see indeed that that worked so like i said quick run through of arrays and how we can work with them inside of typescript and everything else we do in javascript is the same now let's go take a real brief look at how we can do some things with math all right so just a couple little things here if we want to go do a document right and let's say we want to have five plus four is equal to if we want to go and put a math function inside of here you would go and put your parentheses like that and you could go five plus four and throw in a break statement and of course you're going to be able to use all of the different common math types minus and minus of course for subtraction multiplication multiplication division and then modulus, which is going to give you the remainder of a division. And there you can see all those answers right there. It's however very important to understand that if you would go in and try to add anything to a string, that everything will be considered a string. Let me show you exactly what I mean by that. So if I would say something like five plus string two, is going to be equal to, and I would do something like five plus, and there's a string two. Whenever I run that guy, you're gonna see that 52 comes back. So anytime you add a number to a string, it's gonna consider that five, that number to be a string. 
And the one thing that comes up almost every time I do one of these tutorials is a misunderstanding of how plus plus increment or decrement works. I'm going to show you another example here. So let's just do document right. I'm going to define this variable first. I'm going to go random number and number is equal to one. Now what I'm going to do is go random number plus plus is going to be equal to and then plus random number plus 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 and then throw a break statement inside of there. Then I'm going to duplicate this to show you the multiple different ways this works. And all this does is increase the value of random number by one or decrease the value by one. Okay, so that is all we're doing right there. So, of course, we need to change this guy right here. Put the plus plus in the front, negative, negative, and then negative, negative, and run it. And there you can see the value here is one. Why? You're probably saying to yourself, well, you added one to it. If I didn't make this clear, this is exactly the same as if we would go random number is equal to random number plus one. These guys are exactly the same. So random number plus plus. There's only one thing that differentiates them. Whenever you put the plus plus at the end, what is going to happen here is it's going to call the document right to print it out on the screen. And then if it's at the end here, it's like it doesn't exist. It's going to print out whatever the current value of random number is, which is one, just like we defined it right here. Then after it prints it out on the screen, then it's going to increment it. If, however, you put the plus plus in the beginning, it's going to first increment it and then print it. Likewise, it's going to print the current value after it's done, then it's going to decrement it. Down here, it's going to decrement it first and then print out the new value. And that's the reason why you see the odd incrementing and decrementing there. So hopefully I have cleared that up. And now let's jump over and take a look at some conditional statements. Now, if and switch and the ternary operator are going to operate exactly the same way inside of TypeScript as they do with JavaScript. One thing that's a little bit different, however, is the let operator. And basically, variables defined with let inside of blocks don't change the value of variables outside of the blocks. So if that didn't make any sense, let me come in here and I will demonstrate. So let's say we go sample let one, two, three, and then inside of an if statement, we say something like true, and in here we go let sample let and we try to change the value to four five six and then outside of here we go and try to print this and we want to see if the value has changed for this plus and break statement right normally whenever we do this you would expect the value to change to four five six however as you can see right there it did not and that is because of let Let's come in here and I'll do exactly the same thing, but I'll use var just to show you the differences between let and var. We're going to do exactly the same thing here. So let's just copy all this, paste that inside of there. And like I said, change this to var and nothing else has changed. So this is basically the difference between let and var. And I'm going to demonstrate here that when you reload it, if you use var inside of a block statement, Whenever you change the value of it, that it is going to change the value outside of the block statement. If, however, you use let and you change the value inside of here using let, it will not change the value for that variable, right? So that's the major difference between the different conditional statements inside of TypeScript versus inside of JavaScript. And now let's take a look at looping. All right, so looping also is going to work the same in TypeScript as it does in JavaScript. However, there is another operator called for of, and I'll show you why it's useful. So it's very common. Let's go and create ourselves a random array, which is going to have the values of five, six, seven, and eight. And for in is a function we're very used to using inside of JavaScript. So we can say something like and define a value in random array and then let's decide if we want to print this out so we'll say something like value and our break statement run it and you're going to see whenever you go to print that out what did it do it printed out the indexes for the array remember array started zero one two three now what we're going to be able to do with typescript is use something called 
for of, and I'll demonstrate something else for you. Let's say that you would want to convert a number array, which is what we have, into a string array. How easy is that to do? Well, we can just go string array is equal to random array and use the map function and convert everything into a string. So pretty cool stuff. And now what we're going to do is use for of. And how you do that is you go var and the value of, and here I'll use the string array and come in here and put exactly the same thing. So we'll say value and the break statement and run it. And you're going to see instead of printing out the indexes in this situation, they actually print the real values. So there is for of and something useful that TypeScript can do. So now let's go and take a pretty deep look at functions. Now with functions, you're going to be able to assign the variables types for the attributes as well as the return types after the attributes, which might be a little bit weird. And if you don't have anything returning from a function, you would put void inside of there. So I'm going to show you a whole bunch. So let's go and create something called get sum. This is our function and it is going to receive a number and we're going to define the data type for that number and it's going to also get another number. You can see how I'm putting the data type afterwards. And then after that, it is going to return a number. So that's where we put the return type. And we can just come in and go return num1 plus num2. And then if we want to call our function, well, let's go variable the sum1. And I'm going to define that it gets a number value. And we can go and call get sum and pass in the values of 5 and 2. And then if we want to print out some information, we could come in and do something like 5 plus 2 is equal to. And then inside of here, we will actually call the sum one. Run it, and you will see that it goes and passes that inside of there, and we get the proper value that we were expecting to get. Now you're also going to be able to define or assign a default value inside of a function declaration. And also, if an attribute isn't required, you're going to be able to show that with a question mark. So let's come in here and I'll go variable or variable get difference is equal to function. Once again, we're going to do the same type of thing. We're going to go num1 and define that that is a number. Go in again, num2, and define that that is a number. And in this situation, if we would like to assign a, let's get rid of that altogether. Let's get rid of the definition that that's a number, but instead define a default value. We can do so by just going num2 is equal to 2. And like I said previously, if you do not know if you're going to get a value or not, you put a question mark after at the very end of it. And then if you wanted to define the data type, you do it after the question mark. Again, we can say number is the return type for this guy. And then if we want to check if we actually received a value for the number three, we can say if type of num3 is not equal to, and here's undefined, that means nothing was passed inside of it. Well, in that situation, we can return num1 minus num2 minus num3. And then otherwise, we didn't get a value, we can just say num1 minus num2. And now we'll be able to test how exactly those are going to work for us. So let's come in and do document write. And inside of here, we'll say 5 minus 2 is going to be equal to, and we'll call get difference, get difference. And in this situation, we can just pass a 5 inside of there, and everything's going to work perfectly fine because the default value of 2 is going to be used in that situation. Otherwise, we'll be able to come in here and we'll be able to go 5 minus 2 minus 3 is equal to. And once again, we will call get difference. And in this situation, we'll pass a 5, a 2, and a 3 inside of there. Save it, reload it, and there you can see that it works out perfectly fine. Another thing that is very, very useful is that we will be able to come in here and receive an unknown number of values and we'll be using what's called the rest parameter to do that. So we could do something like sum all and here is our function and the rest parameter is going to look like dot 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 and nums like this and then we define that it is a number array 
And like I said previously, if there is nothing returned from a function, we type void inside of there. And here what I'm going to use is reduce with our array to add all the values together. And to do that, we go sum is equal to nums reduce. And this is going to receive an A and B value. I'm going to use our fat arrow here, A plus B. And the default value that we're going to start off with whenever we're summing these. So what it's going to do is reduce is going to allow us to cycle through the array that gets passed inside of here. It's going to get the first and second value out of our array, add those together, and then it's going to continue adding them together until we get to the end of the array. And this right here just defines that the initial value for our final value sum is going to start off at zero. And if you want to learn a little bit more about reduce and also the map function that I talked about previously, take a look at my Learn to Program Part 12 tutorial series. I cover them in immense detail. And they are very, very powerful functions that are available in multiple different programming languages. All right, so now that I went and joined all those together, what I can come in here and do is go document write, and we'll just say sum, and then we'll throw a sum inside of here. And then outside of here, we can call and pass in a whole bunch of different values. And like I said, it doesn't know how many, it's just gonna store them all in the number array. And if we run it, you're gonna see that it was automatically able to come in there and sum all those values for us. And the final thing I want to talk about is the arrow functions that are available for you inside of TypeScript. And basically arrow functions don't include function inside of the definition. So we can say something like add one is equal to, and then say that we expect to get a value passed inside of here. Then we're gonna have our fat arrow and we're gonna define exactly what we want to do with that item passed inside of the function, which is add one to it. And then we're going to be able to do something like 1 plus 1 is equal to, and then we'll call add 1 and 1. And reload it, and of course it comes in there and calculates that. And as the tutorial continues, we'll also take some additional looks at arrow functions. But now I want to jump over and talk about classes. Okay, so classes are going to describe real-world objects by defining their attributes. In this situation, attributes are known as fields and those real world objects capabilities, which are known as methods. So let's say I wanted to come in here and I wanted to define an animal class that I'm going to use to model real world animal objects. Well, inside of here, I would be able to define class fields. So let's say that every animal is going to have a favorite food. I'm going to define that inside of there. And public just means that I will be able to easily come in here and change this value. I'll show you what private and how it works later on. We would also be able to create static fields inside of here. And by saying static fields, this means that the value of this you know, this field inside of here is going to be shared by every object. So let's say that I wanted to keep track of every time I created a new animal type, I could do so. And I'm going to start off with zero because I haven't created an animal type yet. And very often also static fields inside of classes are going to be attributes that don't make sense for the animal to have, but they are something still that we would like to keep track of. So animals normally aren't able to count, so in this situation we are going to make that static. But like I said, this is going to be a value that is going to be shared between every single animal object that is ever created, and that's what static means. And if you want to initialize or set certain values, Every time a new object is created, you use a function that is called a constructor. And something neat about TypeScript is if you mark an attribute as private, the value is automatically going to be assigned to a variable, and the variable is going to be created and everything. So let's say that all of our animals are going to be given a name value and also that we would like a owner to be assigned to every single animal that we ever create. We'll put that inside of there. And then remember, we also want to increment num of animals every, every time a new animal type object is created. And to do that, we have to call animal num of animals, and then let's increment it. So anytime you want to call for a static class field, you have to proceed it with whatever the class name is. All right, so let's keep adding to the capabilities of this. 
Now you're going to be able to define methods or capabilities for your animal objects using private, but if you do so, you are not going to be able to see them in any subclasses or classes that are created from the animal type in this situation. More on that in a second, I'll actually show you how to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna steer clear of using private in this situation. And let's say that I wanted to create a function here that's going to provide me some owner information. And we will come in and we'll get some owner information. So let's go this. And this is going to provide us with a way to reference an object and get its name property, even though we don't know what the object's name is. So that's the chicken or the egg sort of situation. Since we create the class that defines what all the objects do before we create the objects, we obviously don't know what the object's name is. So if we want to refer to an object inside of the class, we use this. All right, anything that I say here doesn't make sense, leave a question in the comment section and I will elaborate. But I think you probably know if you're learning TypeScript the difference between all those. So we'll say something like this and get the name of the animal is owned by, and then let's go and get the owner of this object. So we'll say this owner, and once again, we'll call that and demonstrate how all these different guys work here in a second. You can also have static methods, which are going to be class methods, and how you would create them is go static, and let's say we wanted to find out how many animals were created. You can just go in there and create that guy, and here we're going to say that it doesn't receive anything, but it returns a number, and what it's going to return is, remember, if we want to access a static field, we have to proceed it with whatever the class's name is and we're going to return that value. And also you're going to be able to define getters and setters. So once again, we're going to make this private and define a weight in this situation. So let's say our animals are going to be touchy about providing their weight. We're going to be able to then go get weight and it's going to return a number. And then we'll say return this and weight. And also if we want to set our weight, it's going to have a weight passed inside of it that is going to be a number. And then we'll just go this and the weight property is equal to whatever the weight they passed inside of there. And we use getters and setters so that we, in this situation, if they passed in a weight that contained like a string that didn't make sense, we could just disregard it. But otherwise, we're just going to leave it the way it is. All right, so we just created a class to define animal objects. Let's go and create some animal objects. So if you want to create an animal object in this situation, we could create one called spot. And how we do that is we say new animal and we get past inside of here the name of the animal as well as who owns the animal. We could then go spot and we could call the owner info, print out that information. Let's go and run it. You'll see spot is owned by Doug. All right, that's what owner info does for us. And then if we want to come in here and call for the setter for the weight, do so, just like that. Don't have to actually call a function. We just put a dot at the end of it and then set it. We then wanted to come in here and get spots weight. We could go spots weight is, and then just type in spot weight. There you go, spots weight is 100. Let's go in there and call our static method we created to find out how many animals we have created. So in this situation, we'll say num of animals. And if we want to call that, we have to proceed it with whatever the class name is, and then whatever the function is we want to call. And that's how many animals. And reload it, and you're going to see number of animals is one because we created one total animal object. All right, so remember I said that we're going to be able to create subclasses from these classes. So what we're, what that basically means is we're going to be able to inherit all the methods and fields from another class using an operator called extends. And of course you would also be able to add additional methods and fields as well as overwrite methods that you would want to change in some way. So let's say we want to create a new class called dog and it's going to extend the animal class. So that means it's just going to get all the methods and fields provided by it. We can then create a new constructor and in this situation, let's just say that we're going to be able to get a name as well as an owner. We're not going to change that. We could change it, of course. 
And if we just want the original class to handle the initialization of this brand new dog object, we would just pass in using super that references the animals constructor. So this guy right here, super calls this. That's what super does. And then we can just pass in name and owner, and that would automatically be created for us. And then we could go dog, and we could also go num of animals because we are going to get that by default. And then let's go and create a new dog object just to see what that looks like. So let's go uh, create one called Grover is equal to new dog Grover. And let's say that somebody named Jimmy owns Grover. And then let's go and see how many animals we have. So we can say num of animals and we will call animal dot how many animals. Another thing that's a little bit useful here is we could find out if a dog is actually inheriting from animal. And how we would do that is let's go and do something like is a dog an animal. And then inside of here, go and throw some parentheses up inside of there. And we could say something like Grover instance of animal. And another useful thing is we could check to see if a field exists for an object. So before we call it, we want to check to make sure it exists, we could do so. So we could say something like, does Grover have a name? And how we find out if that exists is we go parentheses and we go name, which is the field that we're looking for, and see if it's inside of Grover or not. And let's run that. And there you can see number of animals comes back as two because we created a new dog object is a dog an animal comes back as true and does Grover have a name for a field or property and that also comes back as true. Okay so there's a rundown of some different things we can do with classes with TypeScript. Now let's take a second look at interfaces. Now you can think of interfaces as defining a contract in which if a class is going to implement the interface it must create all the functions defined inside of the interface. So let's say that I wanted to create a contract in which uh, this is going to apply to all vehicle types that we create. And the contract is basically going to say, if you're going to have a vehicle, you're going to have to have a drive function inside of it, and it's going to return any type of data type. All right. So how we can apply this is we could come down here instead, and there's so many awesome things we can do with interfaces that I'm not gonna be able to really get into in this part of the tutorial. I have uh, tutorials on object-oriented design that gets into it very deep and design patterns and things like that. But I'm just gonna keep it simple here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a constructor, and this constructor is going to have a property called wheels passed inside of it. And of course, it's going to be a number, and that's going to automatically initialize number of wheels for my vehicle. Now, since I implemented the vehicle interface, that means I need to create our drive function. And what drive is going to do in this situation is it is just going to print out some information, and that is all it's going to do. So it's going to do something like simple stuff here. The car drives with and then we're going to just go and get the number of wheels. So I'll say this wheels. And then let's also come in here and we'll say wheels. No, let's go like this. Get rid of that all together. And then we'll say wheels and put a space inside of there. Now we'll do something very, very similar with a bicycle. Actually, it's going to do almost exactly the same thing. Paste that inside of there. Create a new one called bicycle implements vehicle. It's also going to get wheels passed inside of it. And the only real difference here is I'm just going to say bicycle. Drives this wheels. Nothing else changes. Everything's exactly the same. And then let's come down here and we'll create a car and a bicycle. So I'm going to go var car is equal to new car and it's going to have four wheels. And I'm going to do the same thing for bike is equal to and here we'll say new bicycle and it's going to have two wheels. And now what I can do it just go car and call for drive to execute and bike and have drive execute on bike. We save it, reload it. You're going to see the car drives with, whoop, undefined wheels. What did I do wrong here? Oh, this is wheel instead of wheels. So just change that to wheels, change that to wheels and reload it.
load it and now you can see the car drives with four wheels the bicycle drives with two wheels so another example of what we can do with interfaces and now we will take a look at generic functions okay so we use generic functions when we want to be able to work with multiple data types in similar ways however and I'll just show you an example here so let's say we have something like function get type and then what we're gonna do here is to create a generic function we're gonna place one or more data type markers in angled brackets just as you see right here and this is going to be after our function name and then we're gonna use those data type markers instead of actual data types so this guy is going to be passed some value and once again we're going to put in those data type markers right there and then what it's going to do is it's going to return a string and for example we could say something like return and then we could call type of and value in this situation now let's go and create a couple of these guys so we'll say we have something like a string and we'll just give it the value of a string create another variable called a number and let's give that a number value and then we're going to pass two different data types directly inside of this generic function and it is just going to work for us so we can go get type pass in a string inside of there and then we'll do exactly the same thing for our number and da, 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 and wrote it and you're going to see that these completely different data types are passed in there the function handled them perfectly however and printed out the different data types depending upon what data types were passed inside. Now where this gets really useful is let's go back to our example where we have our interface with vehicles and the cars and the bicycles. All right, so what this is gonna allow us to do with a generic function is that it's gonna allow us to accept any class that implements an interface. And our interface in this situation is gonna be vehicle. So we could say something like function and get wheels and then we could come in and say w extends vehicle okay so it's going to work with anything that is going to have the vehicle interface and vehicle and w in this situation is going to be our data type marker and then it is going to return a number which is going to be the number of wheels and then we can just come in and say return vehicle drive and call that function and then just go get wheels and pass car inside of there and also call it whenever we pass bike inside of there and run it and you're going to see that we were able to pass in those totally different uh, types just as long as they had the vehicle interface that they implemented and that automatically worked for those two different completely different object types now another thing you're going to be able to do is actually work with generic classes and they're going to actually work with multiple different data types so we could say class and generic number put in our marker inside of here and then we'll throw another arrow function inside of here that is going to add values so it's going to go value one which is going to be of some type of data we don't know what it is and value two also some type of data and then it's going to return the same type of data that was passed inside of it now we could come in and say a number is equal to new generic number and in this situation we will define that we will be working with numbers inside of here so now we know what t is in this situation then we can actually come in and define how we want add to work with our number type and to do so we just go a number add is equal to and pass in our function and we're going to say that it's going to receive an x and y value and it is going to return x plus y semicolon and semicolon and we come in and say five plus four is equal to and call a number and the specific add function pass a five and a four inside of there throw in a break statement and there we go likewise we could come in and do define exactly how a string is going to work with this generic class so let's come in here once again this is a string oh, comments by the way are like this so like I said, if it works in JavaScript, it's going to work in TypeScript. So in this situation, we're going to work with strings instead. So I'm going to call this a string number. Again, it's going to be a generic number, except it's going to receive, it's going to work with strings in this situation for our data marker. Then I have to come down here and decide how strings are going to be treated differently. 
So it's still going to receive two values, just like we had before. Of course, it has to stick by the rule that we have here, that it's going to receive two values. However, in this situation, if we want to convert into a string, this is another way to convert values into strings. Just put string in front of it with the two parentheses. And then we're going to be receiving strings. So what I want to do is if I want to convert a string into a number, we can just type in number with parentheses and convert the x string into a number and then add it to the y value that is passed inside of there. And then of course everything is going to be converted into a string after that to return that. And now I can come in here and do something like 5 plus 6 is equal to. And here we're going to call this a string num. And then we'll go add. And in here what we're going to do is put and convert these into numbers. So let's convert that into 5 plus 6 with two strings. And if we run it, you're going to see that 5 plus 4 comes back as being equal to 9. And the reason why this guy didn't pop up is I didn't come in here and do this properly. Let's go string number. All right, so now that matches perfectly. And run it. And 5 plus 6 is equal to 11. So there you go. That's how we can use generic classes. Now what I'm going to do is talk about destructuring, which is going to provide a way for us to assign multiple values on one line. So for example, let's say we had var and random vowels is equal to, and we'll have x colon 1 and y colon 2 and z colon 3. Now if I would want to automatically take the value that's assigned to x, y, and z and assign those two separate variables, it's actually going to be very easy to do. What we're going to do is just go var like this and then put x, y, and z inside of there. It's going to pull those values out of random values just as you had set right there. And we come in here and print this out just so you can see that that indeed is going to work for us. So we'll say something like x plus y plus z and throw our break statement inside of there. And this is also going to work for arrays. So let's go and get x, y, and z inside of our array and let's flip them. So we'll say z, y, and x. That's how easy it is to flip an array. And once again, we can go and call document write to print out that information. And here we'll say switch plus, and there's x, y, and z, and save it and reload it. And there you can see. So we put, we went and added those values together, right like this. And here we went and switched the values inside of the array and printed those out on the screen. Right, so two more little guys I'd like to show you that make TypeScript different. And one of the really cool things are template strings. And this is going to allow us to create multi-line strings. So example, we could say something like var mult string is equal to, and what we're gonna do is do the back quote like that. It's in the upper left-hand corner of your keyboard. And you could say something like, I go on for many lines. And like I said, you're going to end that with a back quote. And we could go document write, print that out. But something that's even cooler yet is we'll be able to go document write once again with the back quote. And let's say we wanted to do, we want to throw like, we want to bold this guy. We could come in and do a dollar sign, curly brackets, and then multiple string, multi-line string, whatever. Come outside of that, put our bold tag inside of there finish it off with a back quote and run it. And there you can see that we were able to go in there and bold that guy. Then I'll also, one more thing, is the spread operator, which is kind of cool. And this is going to allow us to separate values in an array into attributes in a function. So let's say we wanted to come in here and create a function called the sum. It's x, y, and a z, and doesn't return anything. Document write, and here we'll go sum plus and we'll get x plus y plus z, and then throw in our break statement. And now let's create an array. Args is equal to 4, 5, and 6. And then we'll call the sum. And we want to pass these individual parts of this array and have them go in x, y, and z instead of passing an array. We just go the sum, dot, 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 and go args and it's automatically gonna work for us. And you can see right there, the sum comes back as 15. So kind of cool stuff. And of course, finally, we can also use enumerated types and we can go enum and do something like emotion and happy. We could set the default starting value. That's gonna start off at zero otherwise, or we could have it set for one and sad. And also, oops, get rid of that. Sad, 
and angry. And just like we would do with JavaScript, we could set those values, emotion, happy, and that would be equivalent to saying my feeling is equal to one. All right. So there you go, guys. There is a rough overview of a lot of the different cool things we can do with TypeScript. Like I said, all the code as well as the cheat sheet is in the description underneath the video. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.